Today's lesson is Lesson 2, Multiplying Whole Numbers and Money, Dividing Whole Numbers and Money, and Fact Families Part 2. So there are some different ways to show multiplication. If you have three letters next to each other, that means we want to multiply those three letters. Now we always put in numbers for those letters, but like this one is length times width times height is what it represents. Okay? A number next to a letter also means multiply, or even a number next to two letters. Okay? We can also show multiplication with parentheses. If one number, uh, or both numbers, have parentheses around them, that means you want to multiply these numbers. So all of these say 3 times 5. Okay? We can also show multiplication with a little dot, or of course with an X. As we get further along, we start using the X as a letter. That's why we have all these other ways to show multiplication. Okay, so this asks, what is the cost of two dozen pencils at 35 cents each? Now, two dozen is the same as 24. So I could either add up 35 cents 24 times, which would take a really, really long time, or I can multiply. So I'm going to take 35 cents and times it by 24. Okay. And when we multiply, remember, we multiply each of the numbers on the bottom by each of the numbers on the top. Okay. So we'll start off by doing 4 times 5 and then 4 times 3. All right. So 4 times 5 is 20. I put the 0 down and carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Okay. So I'm done with the 4, so I'm going to cross that off and put a 0 as a placeholder down in my answer. That's because now I'm multiplying by 20, because okay, the 2 is in the tens place. So I'm really multiplying by 20. So I put the 0 down here to show that. So now I'm going to erase my extra marks. Okay. And I'm going to do 2 times 5. Oops, missed one. 2 times 5, which is 10. Carry my 1. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Okay, add these up. 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4 and 1 plus 7 is 8. So my answer is, it'll cost me 840 cents to buy those pencils. Now 840 cents is the same as $8.40. Because 100 cents, or 100 pennies, equals $1. Okay? So we have a property here called the commutative property. Now this property tells us that it does not matter what order I multiply my numbers or divide them. Okay? Because 4 times 2 is 8 and 2 times 4 equals 8. It's the same as 2 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 2. Okay. So this property only works for multiplication and addition. It does not work for division or subtraction. Okay. Our next thing is the identity property of multiplication. Now this property states that if one of the two factors is one, the product equals the other factor. Okay. So remember in a multiplication problem, if I have eight times one, okay, these numbers here are called factors. And the answer is called the product. So this is saying is if one of the factors is, a num is the one, then the answer is the other factor. Okay. So eight times one is eight. 1,111 times one is 1,111. It doesn't matter what I multiply by, if I, one of the factors is 1, the answer is always the other factor. 
The second property is the zero property of multiplication. This one says if zero is a factor, then the product is always zero. So eight times zero is zero. 1,111 times zero is zero, okay? All right, so here we have the problem 400 times 84. To make this problem easier, I can reverse the two, the order of the factors so that I can deal with these zeros. So I can take 874 times 400. Okay. Now the trick with zeros, when we multiply with numbers that end in zero or are factors of 10, is these zeros can just drop straight down into my answer because zero times anything is just zero. So now I can multiply by the four. And with these zeros here, we can see I'm multiplying by 400, okay? So we're gonna do four times four is 16, carry the one. Four times seven is 28, plus one is 29, carry the two. Four times eight is 32, plus two is 34. So my answer is going to be 349,600. Remember, commas go after every three numbers going from right to left. Okay, so with division, we can use three different symbols to show this. We have our division symbol, our division box, and our division bar. All of these numbers we have, the answer is always the quotient. The dividend is the number we're dividing, and the divisor is what we're dividing by. So here it says when the dividend is zero, the quotient is zero. The divisor cannot be zero, because we can't divide by zero. When the dividend and the divisor are equal and not zero, the quotient is one, okay? So if I have eight and I divide it by um, eight, my answer is going to be one. If I have zero and I divide by eight, my answer is going to be zero. And that can be either way. Okay, so here I'm going to divide 3,456 divided by 7. Now there are two ways to do this. You have long division and short division. Now I prefer long division. It helps me to be able to see each step. But I'm going to show both methods here so you can see which one you prefer. So we have 3,456 and we're going to divide it by 7. So this is long division. So seven can't go into three, a little X to show it can't, but it can go into 34. Seven goes into 34 four times. Seven times four is 28. Okay. 34 minus 28 is six. So then I bring down the next number, the five. Seven goes into 65 nine times. Seven times nine is 63. Subtract. 65 minus 63 is two. Bring down the next number, the six. Seven goes into 26 three times. Seven times three is 21. Subtract. Six minus one is five. So my answer is 493 remainder five. Now to do that with short division, we're following the same steps. I just don't write it out in a big, long string. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite it. 3,456 divided by seven. This one's gonna help if I make it a little bit bigger. So you can see it better. 3,456 divided by seven. Okay. So seven cannot go into three, but it can go into 34. 
I know that 7 times 4 is 29. And then I just subtracted my head at this point. 34 minus 20, or 28, I mean. 34 minus 28 is 6. So instead of bringing it down here, I'm going to put the 6 up here next to the 5. That's my next number. I'll change the color to make it easier to see. Okay. Then I say, okay, how many times does 7 go into 65? Well, 7 goes into 65 9 times. And then I just think 7 times 9 is 63. 63 minus, 65 minus 63 is 2. So then I put the 2 up here by the 6. Then I say, okay, 7 goes into 26 3 times. That's 21. 26 minus 21 is 5, so I do remainder 5. All right. Like I said, I find long division easier just because I like seeing all the numbers, but it's up to you. You decide which one you prefer. All right, we can also make fact families using multiplication numbers, or numbers with multiplication and division. So here we have 5 times 12 equals 60. That means the three numbers I can use are 5, 12, and 60. So my other division fact, or multiplication fact I mean, is 12 times 5 equals 60. Then I need my two division facts. So we always start with the bigger number, 60, okay, and then I'll divide it by 12 to get 5, and divide it by 5 to equal 12. And those are our fact families. And that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.